Police arrested another suspect in connection with the alleged kidnapping and killing of a family. Both suspects are brothers. In response to officials confirming the loss of the family on Wednesday, the public held a vigil in memory of the family. The brother of the suspect responsible for allegedly kidnapping and killing a family of four in the central Californian city of Merced has been arrested. Both Jesus Manuel Salgado and his brother, Alberto Salgado, are booked into Merced County Jail. He is suspected of criminal conspiracy, accessory, and destroying evidence. Relatives and community members gathered in a downtown park on Thursday evening to hold a vigil for the family who were found dead after being kidnapped this week. Our family just lost four precious family souls today. Now we all shuddered. We don't have words to say. I just want to pray all of you guys are here. Thank you for coming and uh, this candlelight probably help this incident, this nightmare won't happen to anyone in the whole world. That's what I pray. Amen. The victims were a baby, her mother, father, and uncle. They were abducted on Monday morning from the family's trucking company and found dead on Wednesday night in a rural area. It's a very, very sad day. But in that sadness, I just don't want to forget four names. Aruhi, Jocelyn, Justy, and Amandi. These names will become synonymous with our love and affection. We will be thinking about them every day. And today, as I look out, as far as I can see, I see the community coming together and being with us. All of us are together. I do not have anything more than to say than all the pastors and the priests have said. This shows unity, this shows compassion, this shows strength. Hundreds of community members turned out to support the family. They brought flowers and stuffed animals and lit and laid candles for the vigil. Religious leaders from various churches and congregations took turns offering prayers for the family and Sikh community. My husband used to drive for the family as a truck driver for Milestone. And um, ever since then, we've been with him for almost two years. And he's been become, he became a part of our family and he introduced us to his family and everything. And that's why we're here to support family support. Merced County Sheriff Vernon Warnke said a farm worker found the bodies and alerted the authorities. The motivation for the crime was not known yet. Regardless of the motivation, community members are horrified. This is, this is literally wild. This is unbelievable. I, been, I cannot even, sorry, I cannot even call that guy an animal. This is, this is unbelievable. We literally, with a break, broken heart and with a heart full of anger, we want justice for, for humanity. This is, this is just too much. This is such a horrendous, horrible thing that's happened in this small town. And there's a large Indian population, and I have quite a few Indian friends, and I just wanted to come out to support the family and the Sikh community. Uh, well, the whole, the whole town, really. I think we're all kind of in shock, because this is just so... Uh, what, what can you say when somebody does something like this? You know, it's just horrible. So I'm, I'm here just to show my support to the Sikh family, community, and to the family. Merced police issued a fraud alert, clarifying that the family is not asking for donations or seeking any assistance at this time. The police will announce any official donation links. By 9.30 a.m. on Thursday, the area where the bodies had been found was deserted after law enforcement officials completed their initial on-scene investigation. Orange County police arrested a suspect Tuesday night after the man allegedly carjacked two cars, led police in a pursuit, then barricaded himself in a home. According to the police, the suspect took the first car a little after 4 p.m. at the upscale outdoor mall Fashion Island. He abandoned the first vehicle and grabbed another one, which he quickly gave up after being chased by the police. On-site witnesses said he was waving a firearm at one point. The man then ran away and barricaded himself in a home in the Dover Shore area. He eventually surrendered by 9 p.m. 
Police officers from Newport Beach, Laguna Beach, and Costa Mesa participated in the operation. A SWAT team was called to the scene to help take the man into custody. Surprised by the skill of the operation, many residents came out to watch the suspect being arrested. A teenager told the Epic Times, quote, This kind of thing does not really happen here too often. I mean, there might have been something I can remember like a few years ago. Another resident said, quote, The neighborhood is out and talking with each other, so that's the silver lining. No injuries were reported. The Los Angeles Police Department is struggling to recruit new officers. That's as it's losing officers faster than it's bringing them in. Chief Michael Moore told the police commission on October 4th that the LAPD is struggling in the recruitment sector. Over the last three years, the department has lost more than 600 officers. Each month, they're losing a minimum of 50 sworn personnel due to retirement, Moore said. At least 60 new personnel each month are needed to make up the difference, but there aren't enough recruits. The decrease in officers has led to an increase in crime and longer emergency response times. Certain departments have been downsized or eliminated, such as the cold case unit that seeks fugitive warrants. Police Commissioner William Briggs confirmed, quote, Our personnel in the sworn numbers are going backward, not forward. There are currently over 9,000 sworn officers, down 38 from the week prior. The civilian workforce stands at nearly 2,700, which is down five staffers. Proposals to combat the hiring woes include offering stipends to LAPD recruits and increasing incentives. Joe Buscaino, LA Councilman and former LAPD officer, said during a council meeting in August that the shortage is due to the force being, quote, demoralized. A large dust storm blew through Southern California and its deserts on Thursday. It brought some areas down to zero visibility. On Thursday evening, a large dust storm blew through Imperial County in Southern California with reports of poor visibility. People shared footage of strong winds and dust blowing through. The National Weather Service advised people to postpone travel until the dust settled. Winds as high as 45 miles per hour affected the deserts with near zero visibility in some locations. The NWS said the gust front generated by a cluster of thunderstorms created the large dust storm, also known as a haboob. It was visible from satellite imagery. NWS San Diego issued a dust storm warning for 5.45 p.m. and blowing dust advisory for the lower deserts until 8 p.m. last night. New data is out for who is making the biggest political donations in California. The top 10 individuals gave more than a combined $56 million. Data gathered by Ballotpedia and Transparency USA has listed out who the top contributors to California politics are. According to campaign finance reports, the 10 largest donations give more than $56.3 million, or 4% of all contributions from January 1, 2021 to June 30, 2022. That's from $1.5 billion of donations. The top donor was Joseph Sandberg, giving $10.9 million. He made his fortune through investment banking and was an early investor in meal service Blue Apron. He has shown support for the Democratic Party. Coming in second was John Cox at $9.6 million. He is a businessman and housing developer and ran as GOP candidate in the state gubernatorial election. Other big names include New York business mogul Michael Bloomberg at $8.3 million, Netflix CEO Reed Hastings and his wife for a combined $7.3 million, and state controller candidate Yvonne Yu at $5.6 million. The California Secretary of State's public records identified more than 4,000 individual donors to California state-level candidates and political action committees.